Hello and welcome to today's session, Being an Effective Vista Subsite Supervisor. Thank you for joining us today. When you start your position as a subsite supervisor, I'm sure that one of the things you want to do is to be effective, and of course, you want to succeed. Much of that is within your own control, but you also know that you need support, information, guidance, and a whole lot more from your intermediary VISTA project and the VISTA program in general. We're going to work together to identify and share what makes a subsite supervisor effective and create opportunities to get you thinking about what would help you succeed. After all, part of your overall VISTA project success depends on your success. So let's get started. I'm Eric Powell, and I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA training specialist at AmeriCorps in Washington, DC. I served as a VISTA in 2006 and a VISTA leader in 2008. And today I'll be hosting and presenting today's session along with facilitating the chat activities and the live question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Looking at today's agenda, we'll start with what is a subset supervisor and what do we mean when we use that phrase? We'll define effective and what we mean by it. We'll then talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities for you as a subsite supervisor, the intermediary, and some shared responsibilities. Then we're gonna do a case study and we'll give you a realistic scenario regarding a problem. And we'll ask you to identify the problem and recommend solutions. Then we'll talk about things that you want to know in your role providing you tips, recommendations, and resources. And finally, we'll end with an evaluation and question and answer session. Who are subsite supervisors? Great question. Well, let's make sure that we have the same understanding of what we mean by this term. When you have an intermediary VISTA project, subsite supervisors are integral to the success of the VISTA project at each site. Subsite supervisors are direct supervisors of VISTA members and leaders at a site or location that is part of an intermediary VISTA project. To briefly explain what we mean by intermediary VISTA project in comparison to others, let's give you a summary of the different models of VISTA projects to make sure that you understand. And this may already be familiar to you, but we'll give you a very brief summary of each of the project models so that you can see that some have a few things in common and each model has a sponsor that's involved in project management and member management in some way. However, there are some key differences. So to start off with, an intermediary sponsor, which is often called a project supervisor, and that's usually the person in charge of the VISTA project, is an organization that completed the application to have a VISTA project. The intermediary is the main organization that is responsible for managing the project, overseeing the management of members, reporting information to AmeriCorps, and more. The intermediary, the intermediary must have a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, with each of its subsites because the subsites are actually different 501c3 nonprofit organizations. And this MOU outlines the requirements and guidelines that the intermediary requires for that site to be part of its VISTA project. And the intermediary is responsible for ensuring that all sites follow what is outlined in the MOU. The intermediary is also responsible for making sure that each site is trained on their responsibilities. Each organization or site is then responsible for day-to-day -day supervision of the VISTA members and passing information up to the intermediary. Multi-site VISTA projects are structured somewhat similar to an intermediary, at least in terms of managing the VISTA members. There would be a project director who likely submitted the application to have a VISTA project, there are several sites, hence why it's called multi-site VISTA project, and supervisors for each, each AmeriCorps VISTA member. The project director is still responsible for training the sites on their responsibilities, and each site location is responsible for day-to-day -day supervision of VISTA members. The difference is that with a multi-site VISTA project, the sites are all part of the same organization. Instead of the sites being different nonprofit organizations, each site in a multi-site project is the same organization just at a different location. One quick example of this may be a particular food bank that applied for VISTA members to do capacity building activities in expanding its program and outreach. The food bank itself has multiple locations with VISTA members at each location, but each location is still that food bank. It is one organization with multiple sites. And specifically pertaining to the single site VISTA projects, they manage everything on their own. 
that Vista project exists only at one site in that one project manages the Vista project requirements of reporting, supervising the Vista member, and all the other requirements. The project director in a single site may also be the direct supervisor for the Vista member, or it may be someone else. And keep in mind that single site Vista projects may have multiple Vista members, depending on what was approved in their application to AmeriCorps. Each model of Vista project has its own unique needs and challenges. Some aspects of one project model may also help another, but information required by intermediary projects would be different than that of single projects. And to be effective in your role as sub-site supervisor, we want you to get to know your project well and make sure that you discuss the expectations, requirements, and responsibilities early on with your intermediary VISTA project so that you gain insight into what resources and assistance you need to succeed. Subsite supervisors also report to a project director or someone at the intermediary who oversees the VISTA project. They directly, supervise, they directly supervise one or more members or leaders, and by directly supervise, we mean that you have VISTA members or leaders who report directly to you. They also may have other subsite colleagues, especially because many intermediary VISTA projects have multiple subsites, and it's up to the structure of your intermediary VISTA project to determine if and how those sites communicate with each other. So given that brief information about project models and what a subsite and subsite supervisor is, the other part of this session really talks about effective. I'm sure we all hear and use this word a lot. We talk about being effective, wanting to be effective, but let's talk briefly about what the definition of effective is and how it applies to the VISTA program. So, we're going to go to a foundational place many people go to for definitions, and that is Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. And let's see what they have to say about it. Effective means producing a decided, decisive, or desired effect. Well, using a word to define the same word is not ideal, but this definition helps us see that we either agree upon, make a decision, or know that we want something to happen, and it is effective when that thing is produced or it happens. Another definition they give is ready for service or action. Are your members and leaders ready for ser <clears throat> service or action? Are you as the subsite supervisor ready to get things done for America and act in accordance with VISTA's policy, regulations, and guidance on supervising? These definitions give us some context, but let's go a little bit further and get more practical to help you in your role. So how can we apply this to the VISTA program and your role? Well, you as the subsite supervisor being effective means you are adhering to the rules, regulations, and guidelines set forth by the VISTA project. You understand that the likely complex structure of your organization and the VISTA project, and you articulate that to your members, just like many of you talked about, that's one way you're effective in your current role in the pre-session chat. You are also producing the desired effect of supervising VISTA members who fulfill the duties of their VISTA assignment descriptions. We know that mistakes can certainly be made, but you are ready to take action and correct the mistakes and prevent them in the future. You have regularly scheduled, rarely missed meetings with each member and leader and try to be as effective as you can with communication. And speaking of communication, the relationship between your subsite and your intermediary is strong with lots of clear and consistent communication of expectations, plans, and more. It's also absolutely essential that you at least understand the general roles and responsibilities for intermediaries and for subsites, and then consider what responsibilities that you can do or that you can share. If these roles and responsibilities are familiar to you, then this will simply be a good refresher. But if you have questions about these specifically as they pertain to your role in your VISTA project, I strongly encourage you to create a list of questions and discussion topics for the next meeting that you have with your VISTA project director. As a reminder, everyone at the VISTA project, including subsite supervisors, needs to know the rules, regulations, and mission of the AmeriCorps VISTA program. In order for them to succeed, they need to know the foundational elements and really connect their work with the mission at hand. Individuals should know the structure of the intermediary project. For example, 
who you as the subsite supervisor go to with questions, how the overall VISTA project is organized, if there is a communication chain and what it is, how your subsite fits into the intermediary VISTA project, since sometimes that can be a very complex structure for you and especially a new AmeriCorps member to understand, and more. This is all information that your intermediary should be giving you in your subsite supervisor orientation early on so that you are more familiar with the project. As a direct supervisor, you are responsible for the daily supervision of VISTA members and leaders. Knowing that whether the VISTA member is local or new to the area, they still need guidance, support, supervision, and a regular point of contact who is available to assist them and answer their questions. And I know from personal experience when I was a VISTA, that's one of the reasons why I succeeded was because my supervisor did all of those things. And I know it seems obvious, but in your communication with individuals before they start service, be sure to literally include the name and contact information of the person who will be their direct supervisor. That is such a great way to start off on an effective way because too many members get all the way to their first day of service and let us know that they don't know who their supervisor is or who they're supposed to report to. Certainly they may have already been introduced to their supervisor, but they may not have known who that person is or that person didn't tell them that they were their supervisor. So giving them this information that they will need will help you be as effective as possible since your VISTA will know who to go to with questions and comments. If you don't have regular and consistent communication with your intermediary, maybe you talk weekly or monthly or other, make sure you at least insist upon it. It doesn't have to be a long meeting and certainly I'm sure you would not want a meeting every single day, but communication is key in any relationship. It keeps the conversation going to solve problems, answer questions, highlight successes, and continually build relationships that we just mentioned. And then plan to make your job easier. I know in this day and age, we all love to make our jobs easier because there's so much going on. Ask your members to document their achievements. Since your intermediary, intermediary project will have to submit required reports to AmeriCorps, they'll be looking to you as the subsite supervisor to give them information about your specific members and leaders. So have your members and leaders track and document their progress for their own records and professional development, but also Again, make it easier so that you can capture the information that you need. Starting at the VISTA project level, responsibilities of your intermediary include recruiting, vetting, and selecting the sites. Just as you recruit, vet, and select VISTA members, you need to be intentional about the types of sites that you want and make sure that they adhere to the VISTA mission and regulations, as well as to those of your intermediary and sponsoring organization. Intermediaries are, intermediaries are responsible for training all subsite supervisors. Certainly, those supervisors can get a lot of information from the VISTA campus and recorded webinars and live webinars, which we certainly recommend, but you also must adequately be trained by your intermediary and get the information that you need to be successful in your role. Intermediaries are responsible for partnering with their subsites on specific duties that involve or would benefit from both enti entities as well as managing the entire VISTA project and ensuring that it is being run in accordance with the rules and in good standing. They're responsible for compiling all information from the subsites and submitting the required reports to AmeriCorps that we just mentioned via eGrants, and they assess and evaluate the VISTA project from their own point of view, as well as from getting feedback from you as the subsite supervisors. In order to improve, it really helps to know what is working and what needs work. And that's another way that you can be effective. In going more specifically into your role as a subsite supervisor, these responsibilities include getting VISTA members started successfully by onboarding, orienting, and guiding them in their exciting new year of adventure. Making sure that the VISTA has a direct supervisor, and we can't stress this enough, who will support and coach the member as well as ensure they are following the rules set forth in the VISTA member handbook. Reporting on site-specific activities and evaluating the progress of the VISTA members at the site as well as the collective progress of the subsite. And there also may be potential other responsibilities and tasks as outlined and assigned by the intermediary. We also wanna know that there are some general shared responsibilities. And again, depending on how your project is structured, they, they may assign some of these to the subsite or the intermediary may keep some, but generally the shared responsibilities include 
working on outreach, recruitment, and the selection of VISTA members and leaders, developing, reviewing, and updating VISTA assignment descriptions, creating, implementing, and evaluating the on-site orientation and training for all AmeriCorps VISTA members and leaders, working together to solve any problems that arise, identify solutions, and plan next steps to prevent problems in the future, and also tracking data for reports, gathering required information, and evaluating the VISTA project while making notes of areas that need improvement and plans to make those improvements. With the shared responsibilities, it is truly in the VISTA project's best interest to discuss what responsibilities will be shared, what that partnership looks like, and how it will work. And again, if you haven't talked to your intermediary about this, or if you have questions, I recommend you work with them because they want to establish a partnership with you and you want one with them. Don't assume that people know what they are doing. Communication is so critical to be abundant and effective. We're going to go on an adventure and look at a realistic case study involving a subsite supervisor. What we'd like you to do in a minute is examine the case study and think about if and how a similar situation may apply at your VISTA project and with your subsite. During this activity, I also want you to think about what other situations have surfaced at your subsite and what issues could arise in the future. And then you can use this activity and the responses to take notes about how you could create solutions for any problems that you may have. Before we begin, I do wanna quickly show this slide that lists many common challenges that subsites and intermediaries have had. And some of them have brought this up to us over the years about just having a difficulty developing a relationship. You can see that they focus on communication, recruitment, VISTA assignment descriptions, reporting, supervision, etc. It's not to say that any or all of this is easy, and it's not to say that there's any particular preferred order of these challenges, but we all know that communication is critical because your intermediary and subsites must have consistent, clear, coordinated, and collaborative communication. I know that's a lot of C's in a row because that can help to better develop solutions to other challenges. And also think about if you as the subsite supervisor do not have good communication with your intermediary or other VISTA project staff, your VISTA members and leaders will probably see that at some point, whether due to your lack of knowledge about the VISTA project, perhaps your inability to explain the structure of the project, maybe there's insufficient support for the member, et cetera. We do not want that to happen. So this case study is an example of several challenges people have mentioned in recent years of being part of an intermediary VISTA project with subsite supervisors. And if this case study does not exactly relate to your VISTA project, please be creative and think about some of the elements of the case study that are or could be part of your VISTA project. As the goal is to give you information and also to help each of you support each other in your role as subsite supervisor. So here is the case study. Taylor has been a subsite VISTA supervisor for six months and supervises four AmeriCorps members. Taylor never received much of an orientation to the site or to the intermediary. Taylor has a very busy workload, loves the VISTA program, and has reached out to the intermediary, but communication has just not really been great. This has caused quite a few delays in collecting data for reports and getting support for supervising VISTA members. In the chat, We'll ask you to, to think about this and type what specific steps, steps <laughs> type what specific steps you think that Taylor should take to rectify this problem. And feel free to be as creative as you want as you think about the multiple issues involved in this case study. It's clear that there's not just one particular issue. Is it the fault of Taylor not being proactive? Is it the fault of the intermediary not doing their job? What are your thoughts? Certainly. Any subsite inter intermediary relationship involves both the subsite and the intermediary working together. But based on this case study, there are things that Taylor can do. So in the chat, go ahead and type your thoughts about this case. Again, it, it highlights on quite a few of the elements we talked on an earlier slide about the primary challenges that supervisors and intermediaries bring to us as challenges that they deal with in the relationship between their intermediary and their VISTA project. 
So seeing a couple of responses coming in, I see one thing Taylor can do is to set up weekly or biweekly meetings for just 30 minutes. Absolutely. Again, that relates to communication, that relates to Taylor being able to articulate the challenges that they are having, as well as the intermediary responding with ideas and tactics. Make a list of specific questions he has and send to the intermediary, ask for a specific date and time to talk. I completely agree with that because sometimes that's what you need to do is without demanding, but insisting on we need to talk. If the answer keeps saying, oh, we'll talk soon or oh, it'll happen in the near future, give a specific date and time to talk. I also see a few other suggestions, try a different form of communication if not, and if not, make a site visit. And this is a critical thing, not just between the intermediary and the subsite, but also between you and your VISTA members. If you're trying to communicate and it's not working and no one's responding, think, it, think of a different way to communicate. It could be texting, it could be phone calling. I know a lot of people don't like the phone, but you're not trying to overwhelm your intermediary, but you do need to have a relationship with them to be successful and effective. And I also see schedule a meeting with the whole team, including the intermediary. And that may be a good thing to do, whether it's on a monthly basis or quarterly or however you want to meet with the larger team to really understand what the focus of the VISTA project is. And I'll read two more. Let's see, one, one person asks, does the subsite have an MOA, which is a memorandum of agreement with the intermediary? Maybe not an official MOA, but it would help outline the roles of the two parties. Thank you for that suggestion because you are correct. Sometimes in these roles of working together, there's a lot of assumptions. Oh, we work well together. We don't need anything documented. Well, okay, maybe you don't need anything documented, but as we said, if it's not effective, it helps to have an official record of what the subsites have to agree to before they agree to be a subsite and what the intermediary agrees to do for the subsites to make sure that if there are issues like this that Taylor brings forward, they can refer back to the memorandum of understanding and say, don't forget, we all agreed to these, these items. And the last one I'll mention, I know a lot of them relate to communication, which we know that's one of the critical components, is uh, Taylor can request a more comprehensive training about their role. And I love that one because, again, we, we mentioned how intermediaries are responsible for training their subsites, and they should be doing that. But if, in this case, Taylor realizes they don't have much of a training, they don't have a lot of information, they're just clueless, Taylor really should insist on an orientation. And sometimes people have to manage up. Taylor may need to specifically outline, based on all that I know in the six months I've been in this role, here's what I feel like I need to know, while also acknowledging that there are a lot of things that I don't know. And hopefully Taylor can learn those things, not just in that training, but also while communicating with other subsite supervisors. So keep these coming because I think a lot of these are great responses and I know some of you that are on this session might be able to relate to some of these examples, some of these ideas, and hopefully a lot of these examples will really help you in your VISTA project think about some of the challenges you may have had in ways that you can overcome them. And I do want to highlight a few other thoughts. In, in relation to this case study, one thing that came to mind when I was looking at this was Taylor could make a list of each and every single challenge encountered, who is involved in the challenge, such as the project director or the VISTA member, and a possible solution or action step for each challenge. Yes, this is a lot of work, but it may help Taylor think of who to contact to help solve the problem, and if there are parts of the problem that Taylor can solve on their own. Another item, and I think someone else mentioned this, was Taylor could outline a brief agenda and demand a meeting with the intermediary and project director to really explain the situation and acknowledge the support Taylor needs, and especially to, in a positive way, explain to the intermediary why such a communication protocol and a partnership will be so important for effectiveness on the part of the intermediary and the subsite. And then also, an option is Taylor could just to decide to do things the way Taylor wants, be very effective and thorough at documenting information and kind of do things on her own. But that has its benefits and its challenges. That could either show the intermediary how great Taylor is and possibly give the intermediary templates and ideas on how they can make things work better with other subsites, or it could backfire and the project director may get upset and tell Taylor they need to follow instructions. The overall goal of this case study, as we talked about, 
is that each challenge and situation you encounter probably has more than one solution. You identified multiple solutions in the chat and they're not exclusive. You can use one chat, you can use one solution, you can use multiple solutions. It's important for you to take note of what you see as a challenge in your VISTA project, hopefully you don't have many, and what you see as an opportunity and come up with a plan. If you happen to notice that the biggest challenge is that the VISTA project staff at the intermediary are not responding much at all, I love the idea that came forward before. Think of a different way to communicate them. Ask for a meeting, keep trying to connect with them, and also work with other subsite supervisors using the VISTA campus discussion forums, live webinars, et cetera, who may be having the same problem and can work with you to come up with a joint plan. The more effective you are, the better and more effective your VISTA project will be. So knowing that especially if you have been in your role for some time, you may have other challenges that you have encountered. Leaving personal names or information out, feel free to type in the, cha type in the chat a challenge that you may have had as a subsite supervisor, along with ideas that you have as to how to overcome it. And this activity, as I continue going through the slide, is really meant for you to think about how you can overcome your challenges and how other people in this session can assist you in thinking of different ways to overcome your challenge. Keep in mind that some solutions to the challenges are at least partially within your control, but as a subsite supervisor, of course, you have to report to your intermediary on various things. So some of them are not within your control. But I think we're all interested in hearing various types of situations that are encountered. We know that we often don't have all of the answers, and sometimes we feel like we don't have any of the answers, but solving a problem that involves us starts with us. So it makes a difference, not just during the session, but also at your subsite supervisor orientation to really outline what you're learning. And as you go through your, your subsite supervisor roles, talk about what you can do to solve the problems. You may have abstract ideas, you may have costly ideas, but I strongly recommend that you use this at your project as a brainstorming activity to write down any and all ideas to solve solutions, even if they seem crazy or wild, because you may be able to cross off the crazy part, but there's probably part of that solution that actually can be used to solve the problem. You wanna look at the problems as adventures and look at the problems that give you the opportunity to try something new. Even though you're busy and have a lot of work to do, remember that the more effective you can be at troubleshooting issues, being present for your members and leaders because we know that they need and want your support, and you wanna show investment and energy in the VISTA project. I know that if I was a VISTA su subsite supervisor, in addition to the things that I needed to know to do my job, there would be quite a few things that I would certainly want to know. And again, it kind of goes back to that, that age old saying of there's must haves and there's nice to haves. The must haves are things that you know that you absolutely need to be effective and to fulfill your role. And the nice to haves, nice to haves are, it would be great and I think I could be even more effective if I had this. And recently, many AmeriCorps VISTA project directors and other staff outlined these critical things that subsite supervisors need to know. There's a lot of information to know and to understand. And as a subsite supervisor, much of it pertains to the structure and communication plan of and with your intermediary VISTA project. This is just an initial list of things to know, and it's not an exhaustive list, but it'll hopefully give you an idea of things that you need to learn and do. You may already be familiar with some, such as needing to understand the VISTA program's mission and history, which hopefully you already do, but if you don't, there's still plenty of time to go on the VISTA campus and learn it. Also, how your subsite fits into the intermediary, because again, if you have a complex structure, I know when I was a VISTA member, I was a VISTA member that was part of an intermediary VISTA project, and it was extremely complicated to understand and articulate to other people. So think about if your VISTA members and leaders have difficulty explaining the structure, it'll really help if you know the structure and can articulate that to them. You may need to do more research into the preferred communication structure and style with your intermediary to make sure everyone knows what's going on. Keep these things in mind as you work with your intermediary to strengthen the relationship. Additionally, 
A few more items for you to consider include the left column, which highlights critical details of your members and what you as the supervisor must know in order to effectively supervise them. The right column includes a few other pieces of information that project directors feel is essential for subsite supervisors to know. Please understand that we don't expect you to be perfect experts and memorize everything. That's not really possible. No one's perfect, but we know that you all have a heart for service. We're so grateful to have you in this work. But we also wanna make sure that you at least know the bare minimum of what you need to know and where you can go to get resources, including online resources, as well as human resources at AmeriCorps and at your VISTA project. In the chat now, our final chat activity, we'll ask you to type if there's any other information that you feel that it is critical for you to know as a subsite supervisor. I know early on I saw a comment that some of the challenges people are having is that it seems like there's a lot of responsibility and work put on the shoulders of subsite supervisors. And it would be helpful to have orientations around human resources, operations, the budget of the VISTA project, things like that. If there's anything that you think of that could really help you to know as a subsite supervisor, go ahead and type that in the chat. And while you do that, I'm gonna quickly tease out a few elements of communication because it's not always good enough just to say we have good communication. You need to articulate your preferred communication style with your members. And by that, I mean, we know that a lot of people quickly send emails for communication. But again, if that's not effective, if your member doesn't respond very well, let them know how you prefer to communicate and ask them how they prefer to communicate. Next, ask them how they like to communicate, as I just mentioned, because again, that'll really help you understand what kind of person they are and how they can succeed personally and professionally. Next, set a minimum frequency for communication. And I suggest starting off with at least a weekly 30 minute meeting. You can always change it later and go to biweekly if you need to, but at least a weekly meeting provides structure and shows the member that you actually care about them and are making time for them. That is absolutely critical. We also recommend that both you and your members document meeting takeaways and take notes to help keep track of what was discussed, the progress achieved, and next steps. Then reread your communication and ask yourself, if someone else was to read this email, would they really understand it? Am I using lingo that is internal and only people inside the organization know and a VISTA member wouldn't understand? Is it too wordy? Does it really outline what I'm trying to say? I can speak from personal experience, and I know my supervisor would, would agree. We sometimes have our own personal bias, and when I write emails, I am a very wordy person. I've learned over time, it's important to know who your audience is, and in this case, you might be communicating to VISTA members. Get to know your audience and find out if you have one VISTA member who wants to know every single detail, that's great. If you have another VISTA member who doesn't care about the details and just wants the, the overall big picture, that's important to know because again, the more you communicate to your members, you wanna be effective so that your role is good, but so that you're also helping to guide your members through the process. So let's take a look quickly and see what else you mentioned that you wanna know. It's important to understand the end of service stipend and the education benefits, absolutely. And I would agree, it's also good for you to know just in general, what benefits are available to VISTA members and the details around them, such as outside employment, non-competitive eligibility, et cetera. It's important to know the lines of distinction between communication and hierarchy because those lines can oftentimes be blurred. It's also important to connect with other supervisors periodically to see what challenges they are facing and brainstorm together. Again, it's all part of building community with others because you're not in this alone. We are all in this together. It's important to know reporting guidelines and deadlines. I see it would be great to have a full calendar of when things are due and what we're supposed to do when. Uh, it's, oh yes, this is a critical one. Important to know the difference between direct service and capacity building. As you know, VISTA is specifically focused on capacity building. And we do have more detail about all of that on the VISTA campus website. But yes, that is a critical thing that you must know because VISTAs do capacity building work. And I'll highlight just a couple more. It's important to know HR responsibilities. Yep, we mentioned that one earlier. And it's important to know 
how to deal with, how to create, and how to work with performance improvement plans. I know a lot of people have mentioned in previous webinars that sometimes they have members that are struggling either professionally or they're just not getting along with staff or they're having really difficult times or they're submitting work but it's not very good quality, it's subpar. And a performance improvement plan is a great way to go because it helps show your member you're not necessarily upset with them, but you've noticed some changes in their behavior or in their work style and you wanna work with them. And it's important to let them know that you wanna work with them. You're not necessarily dictating stuff to them, but you wanna work with them to help them see how they can improve whatever the situation is. So, these are really, really good comments. And I would strongly encourage you, if there any of these ideas came to mind, if any of these ideas stuck out to you, definitely write them down or do a control A and copy, copy and paste information in the chat into a Word document for yourself. It's, it's, I can tell you from personal experience that I find it great to have conversations such as this because I know that if I don't take notes about how I plan to put it into action, or if I don't take notes about what I learned, it doesn't do me a whole lot of good. So these are great. So moving on, you've probably already gleaned some tips based on our conversation, but I'm gonna provide you a few more tips and suggestions before we get towards the end of our session. Five tips for you. First, if you don't see it already, request regular communication with the intermediary. Again, be specific if you want a phone call, video conference, some other kind of meeting, and if you want it to just be between your subsite and the intermediary, or if you want a regular entire team meeting between the intermediary and the subsites. Second, you know yourself the best. So don't assume that your intermediary will know everything that will make you effective. You know many of the things that you need to be effective as a subsite supervisor in supporting VISTA members and working at your site. Let your project director know that. Third, and I apologize for the order of the bullets, that was my mistake, document the challenges you encounter and the specifics around the situation. You wanna keep track of the successes and how you can sustain that success. Be sure to document any questions you have for your project director, for other subsite supervisors, for your members and leaders. Understand the difference between capacity building and direct service that was just mentioned, because that will not only help you and your work with the VISTA program and the VISTA assignment descriptions, but it can really help you in conversations with the intermediary about the overall goal and activities of the VISTA project. And then, you know the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So supervise your VISTA members and leaders like you would want to be supervised. It's not saying you're catering to their every need because there are things that they have to adhere to, but you do wanna be honest, trustworthy, and supportive, but don't do the work for them. Be engaging and be supportive. And you can sometimes be a little critical in terms of feedback, but don't be too critical. You wanna make sure that you're available and open to having conversation, as well as ensuring that you can be a mentor and a coach. You'll see in the chat, there is a link for what we call the helpful links handout, which you can access. And this was developed to provide you some resources and materials to help you plan, execute, and reflect on your subsite orientation and anything that you need to know as a subsite supervisor. There are additional resources on the VISTA campus and that website is www.vistacampus.gov. And you can download this as well as uh, other information to help you succeed. Remember that you can also search the VISTA campus for additional information on this topic and other topics. And if you don't already have a free VISTA campus account as a supervisor, I would strongly encourage you to do so because as many of you mentioned earlier that one of the ways to succeed in your role is to partner with and connect with other subsite supervisors. We have a discussion thread on the VISTA campus and the, the forum is called Supervisor Cafe specifically for supervisors to communicate about different topics. And this is one way that you can communicate with each other. So when looking at today's agenda, we covered briefly what is a subsite supervisor and what we mean by that term. We explored the definition of effective in the context of a subsite supervisor. We did an overview of subsite, intermediary, and shared responsibilities. 
then looked at a case study to identify some challenges and recommended solutions based on that situation. We recently highlighted important things that you would want to know as a subsite supervisor and offered some tips and resources. And before we get to the Q&A section, I do want to ask you to complete a, ses <clears throat> a session evaluation. These are extremely useful to us because for us to be able to offer webinars and sessions that are useful and critical to your role as a subsite supervisor or the VISTA program in general, we need to hear from you not only how this session was, but what other ideas you have for future webinars. So please either as we're doing the question and answer session or immediately after the session, please include your honest feedback. Most of you also have my email if there's additional feedback, but we really want to capture as much feedback as we can in this evaluation. And thank you in advance. So now we are going to move on to the question and answer portion of the session. I am looking through the chat and I'll quickly mention if you have specific questions specifically about your role as a subsite supervisor or the partnership with intermediaries, please type it in the chat. If you typed it much earlier in the session, I would ask you to please type, copy and paste it again. I'm scrolling through the chat now to see what questions may have come in. I know um, this isn't really a question, but I, I've seen some comments that this session would be really helpful in advance of when VISTA members start so that subsite supervisors can be much better prepared. I agree. And I will say sometimes it can be challenging from a VISTA headquarters perspective because we know that we do have VISTA projects that start at all different times of the year, almost every month. And so we wouldn't necessarily be able to offer a live webinar every single time before a VISTA project starts. However, we do still offer monthly live webinars and this webinar, just like other webinars, will be recorded. So there may be a way in the future for us to direct new and upcoming VISTA supervisors and sponsors to this session pretty soon when they start so that they'll be able to see the information and kind of know what information they need to know as a subsite supervisor and other ideas as to how they can connect with their intermediary. So there's another question in the chat that's actually for all of you, but I'll read it quickly. I know there's a few of you that said they're interested in knowing what tools other people are using for project and task management. So if you have ideas for how to manage your project and manage tasks, please type those in the chat. Feel free to include links to resources and other things that you have. Again, this is another opportunity for you to share what information you have, what your VISTA project does, whether you're new or if, you're, if you've been in your project for a while. Is this webinar recorded? Yes, this webinar is recorded and the, the recording will be posted on the supervisor's webinar page of the VISTA campus. I'll say in about 10 days from now, obviously we have the Christmas holiday coming up, but I also need to work with our developers to get it posted on the campus. But in just over a week, you will see the link to this being recorded. So let me see, I'm not sure if this is a question. Right description of subsite supervisors understanding and ask intermediary if that is correct and what changes. Okay, so yeah, in terms of understanding what the description of the subsite supervisor is, yes. We, we give you the general idea of what it means to be a subsite supervisor, but I would recommend as this mentions to communicate with your intermediary and ask them if they have any other specific guidelines that they need you to do as a subsite supervisor. It could relate to reporting, it could relate to supervising, it probably relates to recruitment. Make sure you reach out to them to say, here's what I know my responsibility is, but I wanna know from you as the intermediary, are there other things that I need to know and what changes are coming up so that we can understand how to make this, this work. So a question that I think might apply to quite a few folks is, what if your VISTA struggle to attend required meetings with their subsite supervisor? Is it appropriate for us to make individual accommodations? So that is a, I feel like that question is like a loaded baked potato. I'm not even sure if I like baked potatoes, but anyways, <laughs> there's a lot in that question. So let me see if I can unpack it. First, I will try to answer it backwards by saying, yes, there are times where it can be and is appropriate to make individual accommodations, depending on the needs of your VISTA members. Obviously, there's different types of accommodations. There's accommodations based on physical or mental ability. There's accommodations based on communication, all kinds of accommodation. 
as you get to know your VISTA members, and again, hopefully you do get to know them pretty well on a professional level, it's good to know even simple things like if you can tell when it seems like they're having a good day or a bad day. And that seems very basic, but that will help you to understand, like in this case, the question was if they're, if they're struggling to attend required meetings, there could be a lot of reasons for that. They could be just having a difficult time being a VISTA member in general. Maybe they have an issue with you as their subsite supervisor and they don't wanna talk about it. Maybe they're having a bad day. We don't know what the, we don't know what the reason is, but in your meetings with them, and I would recommend perhaps a one-on-one -on -one meeting in this case, it might be good to start out kind of generic and ask them, how are things going? And if they don't respond, you can, you can respectfully pry and, and talk a little bit about some of the work they're doing and get them to focus on something very specific. But if they're not attending the required meetings with their subsite supervisor, the next time you're able to get in touch with them, even if it's not during a meeting, one of the suggestions that we have is to specifically ask them, hey, whoever their name is, I'll just call them Taylor since that's the name I'm using. Taylor, we've noticed that you haven't, it's been difficult for you to attend the meetings recently. Are you having some scheduling difficulty? Are you really busy? Really try to tease out what things could be causing that problem. If the VISTA says that they don't have very good internet access, okay, well, that might be an individual accommodation you can make and maybe you just have them do a phone call. There are lots of ideas and certainly if you have other ideas, please type them in the chat. But we do understand as a VISTA program, required meetings are essential. The other quick thing I'll add to that before I go to the next question is sometimes I have found, and again, this is personal, that sometimes the word required or mandatory can be off put, even though the meeting is required and they need to attend. Sometimes if you can find a way to not only kind of hint that it's required, but find a way to make the meeting engaging. It doesn't have to be playing a game or anything like that. But if you get to know your VISTA, including going back to their member application and looking at what their skills and interests are, if you can find a way to really show the VISTA what's in it for me, they may not be ecstatic to attend the meeting, but at least they might have a little bit more interest in thinking, okay, I'm not just joining this meeting to please my supervisor and talk about boring stuff. I'm joining this meeting because it's really going to help me in my role as an AmeriCorps member, and I might even be able to learn something professionally and personally in my role. I'm scrolling through to see if there's any other questions. Again, if you have additional questions, you can either raise your hand in Zoom and ask it verbally, and our producers will, will call on you, or you can type it in the chat. I do like a lot of the comments I'm seeing, several suggestions from different uh, subsite supervisors about things they've used to coordinate communication like Microsoft Outlook tools, Microsoft Teams, Trello, Taskray. I've never heard of some of these, but I'm sure you know what you're doing because I definitely don't. But <laughs> keep those ideas coming. And I'll wait just another minute or two to see if there's questions. I also want to say if you have questions as you go through your role, please be sure to not only write them down, but sometimes they're more general questions that maybe we as the VISTA program can answer, but a lot of times they might be specific, such as questions about the structure of your VISTA project or questions about the roles of other project staff at their intermediary. Just like we ask VISTA members to write down all the questions they have for their direct supervisor, please, please, please write down questions you have and get them answered. So I see another comment about uh, treating VISTA members like other staff, because although we manage their calendar and more generously that as a usual staff person, wondering if other people take this approach and fold them into all staff meetings and work group meetings. I will quickly add to that. I think that's a great idea. Obviously the one, the one caveat slash caution is to make sure that your staff members and team know that this person is not an employee, they're a VISTA member, but yes, encouraging them to participate in staff meetings, encouraging them to, if they can, if they're able to join a board meeting and learn more about the organization, or if your team has a holiday retreat or a fun activity, they do, a fun activity they do once a month, finding ways to incorporate your VISTA member into the culture of your VISTA project and your organization 
is essential. When I was at Vista, I was in the state of Rhode Island and it's a small state, so it's easy to get around, but my supervisor and our intermediary found ways to have fun events in person and virtually. And it made a difference because you really feel like even though I re relocated for my service and I was new to the community, you you feel that people actually care about you, not just in getting the work done and, and fulfilling the duties of your VISTA assignment description, but I truly felt that people cared about me as a person, about my personal and professional growth. Scrolling through to see if there's one more final question. I see a lot of comments again. Thank you for these. It's, it's great that you guys are communicating with each other. And again, feel free to continue these conversations on the VISTA campus discussion forums or in other mechanisms that work for you. So not seeing any other questions, what I'm going to do is move on to the last slide and I'll, I'll be on until three o'clock if there are additional questions, but I'll go ahead and move on to the last slide so we can officially end the session. I do wanna thank in no particular order, my editor and support team as always, Barbara Reynolds for the great work she does in leading our VISTA training unit and coordinating webinars and trainings for supervisors, members and leaders. I wanna thank Mike Dietz and Steve Gray at LSI for their great work in managing the Zoom technology and always helping us to keep on track. And of course, I really wanna thank you for being subsite supervisors or whatever role you have. Again, we could not do the work without you and we know that your work is difficult and challenging, but truly, truly, truly kudos to you for what you've done and what you will do in supporting your members, your leaders and everyone at your VISTA project. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy holidays on behalf of the VISTA project. I apologize for that noise, that was my cuckoo clock. And um, we will see you next time on the next webinar. Thank you very much, this concludes today's webinar.